And good morning, and uh, hello again. This uh, is now almost the release. Uh, we're getting close to a release candidate, actually. This is now August 28th, and uh, we're hoping to have a release candidate any moment. <laughs> Happens the moment we start talking about it and thinking about it, it seems like, well, maybe we're there. So what I thought I'd do is uh, dedicate this uh, tutorial or demo to discovering or rediscovering what's new in the 3D designer. This is sort of an perhaps an overview. The layout, the look has changed, has evolved and uh, so here it is. I'm not going to go into it quite yet though because we do need a couple of resources and that will be the elevation map for instance. So let's go first and uh, render our traditional plasma noise and <coughs> have this plasma noise um, <coughs> let's see something like this let's go paint over it a little bit more I'm going to use a, a fairly large airbrush spatter just just a large airbrush there and paint over it not dark let's make it bright uh, with some randomness so let's go to the settings of our brush and add some random position random pause a lot of it so that it it kind of randomly puts these domes around a couple of places that I'm painting and then with the left button the dark color I'm going to uh, perhaps bring down the edges so we have sort of a monolithic um, peak in the in the center and uh, if, you know it could be an island it could be just something that sticks out of the plateau uh, out of the savanna uh, we can have a little bit of a, a carved canyon going in I don't know if you see that it's basically an elevation map and um, we are going to have some high elements some higher areas and some smaller uh, canyons and so on so just give it some interesting basic shape um, and then we might want to adjust that. Before that, let's go save that or at least store it in memory so we can get back to it if we need to. If we feel like we want to do something from that starting point again. Uh, this time I'm going to go to adjust uh, curves and uh, adjust just a little bit <coughs> so we have kind of a little bit of a plateau at the top here. You know, we don't want to have too much of a Grand Canyon or, or Monument Valley look but uh, it's good to have a little bit of a plateau at the top and then at the bottom also bring down the the valleys make them a little bit wider get more darkness there not too much of that vertical right if you have this vertical transition from dark to bright uh, you see that here you have some dark areas and then suddenly it's bright that will really be the, the Monument Valley look um, <laughs> what we do want is perhaps something a little bit more transitional so let's get something up oh, let's reset that Let's get one like this and a little bit of an S shape basically. All right, let's do that and store this one. All right, so this one will be probably our starting point. What do we do next? Well, one thing I'd like to do is add some erosion. And um, that is something we can do in two places. One is you can go straight to the stylize and erode it right there, add some erosion to that. And so that creates an erosion map, which is really something you could store separately and then subtract from the elevation map. Um, <coughs> that would be one way to do it. But uh, that would be particularly useful if indeed you want to actually do some more processing on that. Right? Maybe these uh, rivers and canyons are a little bit too crisp, too narrow, and you'd like to blur them out a little bit. Maybe you would like to add some photographic light diffusion, and then you know that the the, the brightness is shining into the dark sides, dark areas, and that will ultimately cause it to look like it's flattening or evening out, widening the uh, the carvings of those uh, rivers, and sort of making the erosion look a little bit uh, softer and older, and perhaps also, you know, sometimes that will add a little bit, uh, a look of wind erosion, just weathering at large. So, I mean, that's that's an interesting uh, option we have there. But uh, I'm going to undo that and go back to this and simply actually let the 3D designer do that. So under transforms, 3D designer, 
what we do is we go in here and we have a first look at the landscape as we see it from this elevation map. Right, let me okay, let me cancel this and let's bring it back to the front so we can keep looking at it. There it is. Um, and so filter transform 3D designer. And there it is. Now and the look has changed a little bit, the layout of the tools. There's a whole block of things we can store that's on the lower left corner here nicely organized and there's a new one here called save ob object that's a wavefront obj file so we can now save this uh, mesh this elevation map turned into a mesh as a 3d object into a wavefront obj file which then in turn means you can use it in um, your favorite 3d program you know whether it's carrara lightwave uh, you name it there's a lot of 3d programs that can use the 3d mesh um, and of course, you know, you can quite often you can do your own erosion there or additional erosions and other effects and of course then do the animations. Uh, but we can do some of that in here too. So let's start exploring. The more button here will show you additional controls that are showing on the right side. So less or more shows you those. And those are mostly those new ones that we've added for 9.5. Right, there are a few other uh, changes and additions here too. So let's go and discover those. Um, perhaps the first one I'll do is just explore ambient occlusion. Um, you can do an additive or a multiply mode and that can add a bit of confusion. <laughs> it can also add a lot of 3D depth to it. Uh, the ambient occlusion um, basically adding some uh, shading and self shading and um, ambient uh, environment lighting um, and, and that particularly will be useful if you do multipass rendering with anti-aliasing towards the end. It will be a cleaner uh, display than what you see here. Initially, it's a little bit uh, fuzzy, grainy looking, but when you do your final rendering, it will take its time to make it a little bit better. Uh, <coughs> so that's, that's one place where you can go and explore. I'm going to explore some other areas. Um, Let's go back to 3D Designer. This time I'll turn the ambient occlusion off and I'll say let's do ray trace. Now what is it really ray tracing? What we're ray tracing are shadows that are cast from one of these light sources. So we have two light sources, right? We've always had this one here, the light one, and you can change the angle from where it's coming, the azimuth. There's also an altitude if you bring it down low or way up there. And uh, let's say for instance we want this one a really low light source, uh, but far away. The zenith is like uh, right in the center. Imagine a, a cylindrical coordinate system. There's a cylinder standing here. The zenith is how close or how far from that center it is. And then the altitude is bringing it to bring it way up there. Um, and the uh, azimuth is to rotate it or spin it around that vertical axis. So if you have the zenith far away or somewhere around here, um, you can see the light source rotate around, spin around there. Right? So what we want to do is have long um, shadows coming from, or shading effect coming from this light source. So we bring it down low, but also keep it far away. Now, if it's too far, uh, you may see a little bit of specular lighting there, but we may need to bring the amp amplitude. So we call that the light range. So the, am the, the, the brightness of that light source. The light range is the range of you know, how far it can reach. Uh, or how, how bright it is and therefore how much lighting effect it has on that. Um, <coughs> the specular highlights you can also adjust and that sometimes will make it look a little bit more like a wet surface or metallic surface or shiny reflective surface. If you want it more uh, absorbing soft light um, like sand, dry sand, um, that would be a way to do it. Um, let's go, so let's keep the zenith pretty far away and have still control of the azimuth to say where this light comes from. The beauty of that is that it allows you to bring it to the side so that you start seeing the ridges in the uh, in the mountain scene a little bit better. All right, let's see what else we have here. So we have the altitude. If you bring it down low, it's there. We have the brightness. We can give it a reddish tint if we think we're going to need a sunset uh, type of scene. So let's uh, set the light color to a little bit more of a reddish condition, something like this. And so we have this right there. So now the next thing is the other light source. This one is more of a bluish tint and it can also be rotated. 
um, but um, what we do with that one is typically we bring it way up and uh, we bring it way over our right over our head so it's this one's on top of the scene and what we want for that to to do is to basically give it a little bit of an ambient almost like an ambient looking lighting uh, from way above no particular direction um, and uh, that one does not cast a shadow but this one here the first one we do have the option to have it cast a shadow of different types uh, some fine and crisp or we can ray trace a medium quality or a soft edged uh, shadow and so what you see with that is that it, it will cast these shadows in real time it's it's done on the gpu and it's it's pretty darn fast so with that you can you can create a little bit more of a uh, mood or or appearance uh, of this light source uh, hitting it from the side and uh, still have the brightness of that as well so let's see we uh, let's say we have the light coming in from this side here on the right side and what else can we do to make it look even more interesting um, <clears throat> that's probably where we can still use also the fog and the fog from a distance that's the distance fog getting us the background color here so we might want to change that perhaps to a bluish white a very light kind of a bluish tint uh, that's the background color now and so if we add the fog level that's the fog uh, at a certain distance and so things disappear in that fog you can also change the angle here the camera zoom and that obviously also has a, a, a mapping relationship to that fog so you, you see one affects the other um, one thing I also like to play with is the ground fog that one you can have in a linear or nonlinear mode let's try the nonlinear mode and you see some patches here let's bring the high level up a little bit and so you see a ground floor ground fog there and make it a bit denser or even reverse it if you have the low end actually above the high end uh, some, some funky stuff you can do with that um, let's go explore the next step um, let's move this over a little bit. There's some move commands. Move it to the left so I can see it better. And move it up. And there's also some rotation, of course, here. Uh, we'll do the final view angle a little bit later. What we want to do is have a good look here and start working on some other options. So let's click the more button. That's where we will now have uh, our additional uh, control. So there's a cloud system here with a couple of preset clouds. Um, and we'll explore that perhaps in more detail in a separate tutorial uh, but essentially you enable some of these and you get some patchy uh, clouds that look like volumetric it's that particle cloud system and uh, does add uh, many times some some really interesting appearance to that scene especially if you position it nicely perhaps on the side right so you have a little bit of that not too much uh, you can do the self occlusion you can adjust a little bit how much brightness you want on that ambient uh, you can change the size and so all of that can be really useful to add uh, a bit more of a uh, misty looking theme to that uh, we'll turn that on perhaps later let's explore a few more things oh there is by the way when you're experimenting with those clouds they can be quite time consuming for the rendering and that really depends on the speed of your GPU <laughs> and your system overall so what you may want to do is enable the faster preview and that will approximate a few things but it will also make it uh, so much more responsive and interactive for you to use all right so i think we'll just remember this one here or this one as one of the clouds we might want to uh, activate at some point or add to it but uh, let's not get uh, stuck with that quite yet this is the atmospheric side that we will add later. Let's go disable that for now. And <coughs> let's go focus on what's next. So here we have erosion. And so we saw earlier the erosion map that we created separately. Well, this is sort of built in, just like the cloud system has been built in to uh, make a couple of quick uh, erosion maps. And what you see here is as I'm eroding this, if I'm increasing the amount of erosion here, you can actually also change how much rainfall you want. So if you have very little rainfall, it's recalculating that and you only get a few of these creeks developing. But if you add more, let's say 22 or even 200, it takes a little while to calculate that, but you get very strong erosion. And in fact, it's totally flattened out here and that, that terrain is gone. Um, so maybe that's too much. Let's do three. 
Yeah, that's pretty nice. That will add a nice amount of erosion effects here. Um, there's a couple of other parameters here you can try, like the length of uh, the, the runs. Those creeks has a, have a certain length, and you, you can play with that. Um, this makes very short <coughs> little potholes, if you want. Uh, these makes them a little bit longer, and 333 makes them even longer. Um, <coughs> flatness, there's another parameter here. Zero, nothing much there. Uh, one <coughs> that starts to to add some some visual effects. Play with those. Uh, if there's any tool tips, um, read them. Right, this may tell you some more about what that parameter will help you do. Uh, you can invert the um, the gullies or the, the the erosion effect. And now here's the <coughs> new parameter that we haven't talked about mu too much yet. This one's the sediment amount. So once the calculation has been completed, right, for this uh, uh, erosion map, applying it here is pretty fast. Now remember, in um, in 3D design or anything you do when you are uh, turning it around, it's temporarily reducing the sample steps. So right? you see this here, you can go to a very low sample steps or the full resolution. Uh, but temporarily, while you're rotating this, for instance, it's switching to a lower resolution just temporarily so that it can do that really interactively fast. Right? And, uh, and then when you let go, it uh, displays it back at the full resolution. So you see, the same thing <coughs> you see the same thing happen when you apply erosion. If you reduce erosion, uh, while you hold this thing and drag it around, it is at a lesser quality, lesser resolution. And when you let go, boom, now it's got the full resolution again. Now, <coughs> there is, uh, so th that's the case with this, and it's the case also with a few other parameters. Let's talk about sediments. So with the sediments, you are essentially saying, well, all this erosion is causing uh, some rocks, debris, and sand to be deposited down in the lower parts. And so what you see here is you can dynamically increase how high that thing, that sediment gets accumulated. And the amount of it, uh, it's, it's really neat. I mean, it totally transforms the landscape. When you think about it, look at that. Look at this area here and see how that changes by just increasing or decreasing that parameter a little bit. Makes for a very different landscape. This one here, you might think you're on Mars. And this one here, you're back on Earth, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe both of them could be on Mars. But uh, the, the, the nice thing is that it adds a lot of uh, interesting looking detail in a variety of places here. So for instance, let's see around here from this angle. Um, let's go explore that, right? And take these two. So both of these have their own way of addressing that sediment deposits. Now sediments can be just at whatever the color of the terrain is already or they can be their own color, and that's what you see down here. Uh, not colored initially, I cannot select it right now because I'm actually not applying color. This is what this does here, the create texture is what's going to apply color based on certain criteria, um, elevation and slope. Um, so this is basically the um, texture creation or coloring based on elevation and slope, but then we will have the sediments also uh, open up to deciding whether to adopt one of those colors. All right, so these sediments could actually turn green. Um, let's uh, let's do that. The the way that the create texture works is that it it will put the coloring into the, the swap image, and we don't currently have it because we look at the color source of the object being the object color. We could instead say take the image that was used as the elevation map. And so that, of course, will darken it into the lower areas because remember the darker, the lower parts are the darker sides. And then the brighter it is, the more it will reveal that actual color. Uh, so that would be when we have the color source here. And that sometimes adds a, a great amount of uh, realism or visual effect as well. Uh, but what we really want to do is use the color that's in a swap image. Now, right now we don't have any, it's just plain white, so it shines at brightest possible. What we'd l like to do actually is to <coughs> to have the cre uh, create t texture. I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm going to call this creature a few times. <laughs> create texture. Uh, let's go and uh, create a texture that will replace uh, and go into the swap image. Right? So in the swap image, we now have the ability <coughs> to control the white part, the snow cap if you want, 
the the rocky part and the green part so whatever is between the snow cap and the green parts here <coughs> that is um, the the rocky side of it and you can bring the snow caps down uh, and I mean really down you can bring down the, the greens you can have the snow caps really all the way down you can also change the smoothing and intensity of it so that you have <coughs> more of that very uh, dispersed, uh, a little bit fluffy snow, uh, or, or, or localized snow, or, or very much all over the place, like really a winter scene. And then one thing you can do is actually on the green or on the rock parts, change the colors, even on the snow actually, if, if it's not white enough. It, it has by default a little bit of a bluish tint to kind of reflect the, uh, you know, the bluish nature of the sky, uh, but we, we can change that to white, and we can also change the color of the rock to perhaps not be a grayish but kind of a bluish uh, like a frozen appearance and then also the color of the grass maybe a slightly darker blue uh, something like this so now we have some bluish tints uh, starting to to show of course the coloring of the light source may uh, change that as well uh, but there is some interesting additional coloring that you can get and now uh, let's go here let's make it 8 and 8 Okay, now there is one more and that's these options here. Now that we have actually a, a, a texture created, uh, we can now also uh, say that we want the sediments that we have here, those sediments we want them to be colored. Rather than just stay at their current color, uh, the sediments will uh, simply adopt one of these three colors. We can say make them all grass, so the grass or the green stays on the entire sediment. If I didn't have that, if you say not colored, you see based on the elevation and the slope, uh, it can actually have a color that changes, as you can see here in this area. All right? Let me see if I can zoom into that a little bit. Yeah. So instead of that, what you can do is you say, well, let's make it all grass. And so now the grass goes up all the way there to the top. Let's bring it down a little bit. That is so awesome. Look at that. Let's bring it down a little bit like this. All right, so we have the green here. Now we could also say, no, let's keep it the rocky color or let's make the snow go down all the way down there. And that's also really interesting. Now, uh, again, the light source is a little bit too reddish. Let's go bring it a little bit less in the red and reveal more of its actual of the rock's actual color. So I, I get more of a whitish light source. That's what I get. A little bit less on the intensity. Let's uh, spin this thing over to the side. Uh, something like that and we're starting to look at an interesting set of landscape features here uh, let's spin it up uh, now it's also very rugged and um, perhaps a little bit too much so one thing that we could do also is uh, first of all view it from a little bit more of a distance um, but then also uh, add some smoothing to that terrain here so there is the the pre-filtering that you can in fact even increase to get it very rock uh, uh, crisp and rocky or you can smooth it down a little bit and you can see how now it's, it's a much more wind wind blown or wind battered surface right there's a little bit of erosion still showing but the surface itself is very smooth that of course really works a lot uh, well if you want to make it look like uh, it's got some snow caps there it's got, in fact look at the valleys here with the sediments that uh, the sediments uh, by themselves, uh, by, by their nature, are, they are always smooth like that, right? Even if you set the, uh, the pre-filter up to very crispy, you can see how the rocks turn very crispy, but the sediments continue to stay very flat and smooth. And so that's, that's really nice. Uh, let's set the, let's get a kind of a higher end, but not totally highest value here for the sediments, maybe in the 60s or 70s. Um, and then also the, <laughs> the the hardness of that uh, specular reflection uh, we can do that a little bit we can uh, adjust the global or oh, the, the top light we can adjust we saw that uh, light range here um, we're getting close to having pretty much everything enabled here you know here we can adjust how much of that blue goes up how much of that rock color or snow color is everywhere um, we can really play with these and that's where you'll see sometimes some really interesting formations where there's some slightly bluish tint this might be a little bit too much on the um, on the saturated side so I'll, I'll try to get it closer to white and it'll be just very subtle
All right, so that's that. Um, let's see, smoothing. We can do a little bit of smoothing. We can do more smoothing. That's uh, the smoothing of the transition on these colors. All right, these colors as they go from rock to grass color or whatnot. Let's let's try the grass again. Let's go back to a dark green, something like this. There. So there's in the deeper parts of the valleys. There's some dark greens. Let's can bring it. Let's bring it up a little bit, and reveal the the rocky. Uh, surface that's kind of a grayish tint as well and so now we have it back to where it might start for you uh, with the default setting so let's see if we can finally get our uh, our final look we have a fog color for the distant distant fog that's a little bit too much there let's let's reduce that let's uh, bring the size up a little bit there's a scale in one axis or the other direction Let's go and uh, now rotate the heading here. And what was the initial orientation we had? I think something like this. Uh, let's go pitch it down. And uh, yep, we see all these erosion gullies there. And uh, perhaps now reduce the fog a little bit there, like that. And so now we might also want to, let's see, where we can go like something like this here now we might want to also bring back that uh, volumetric cloud system here so what was it single rain cloud there you go something like this um, let's bring it down with a little bit more uh, self occlude uh, let's make sure the the faster preview is on so you get a nice interactive experience on that notice that the lighting really also hits the clouds if you rotate the light like the, the azimuth here on the first light you see it will also hit the light different ways and that's really good what you want to do is to have the light coming in from the side at a sharp angle so it reveals these uh, gullies and the erosion really nicely uh, but it also adds a nice amount of depth and uh, you know myth mythical look to to the, these clouds uh, the brightness you could adjust uh, if you if you want them to really shine you know and start to glow there um, something like that um, <coughs> and that's where I can see you'll be spending a lot of good time <laughs> um, let's go and uh, move it perhaps into a little bit more of the distance there adjust the size a little bit there you go so now we have a view we might want to add a little bit of an angle from down below there you go and something like this Oh, it's getting there. It's definitely getting there. Let's see if we can change the angle a little bit. Really being there is nice. Um, let's see, anything else on... Let's see, if we reduce the sediments, we see a little bit more on those rocks here. That can be interesting sometimes, but you know you know what you want. You, you have an idea of what this desolate landscape needs to look like. So you play with this until you have it just right. And what I'm going to do is say this is close to just right. A little bit more, a little bit less on the fog. Let's check that ground fog one more time. Yeah, that's too much. It's definitely too much. We want a little bit so we have it disappear back there. Uh, let's get the, yeah, that's probably going to be something we need to touch up uh, or work on separately. Oh, maybe we can move it back. We did move the scene a little bit to the left so that we could see it all. Uh, I'm going to go move it back to the right. Yeah, there's definitely enough on the left here that we can also do. And so now we can perhaps give it a final orientation. And that's perhaps what we'll do is have it something like this. All right, so <clears throat> at this point, uh, you might say I'm done, but you know, you also want to see, is this going to be the final render? Or do you actually have a need for this to be rendered in a different program? Like, are you gonna take this into your favorite 3D program? And uh, if you do, you'll probably want to save a few of these things here. You might use, for instance, the, the depth, the Z-buffer, uh, to do uh, depth-dependent uh, blurring. You might want to do a blur that depends on how far it is. You can even do that in Dog Waffle, right? So you can, you can convert the Z-buffer to alpha and then do an alpha channel-based um, blurring so that it blurs perhaps the parts that are far away but not the close ones. Or, or the other way, you invert the Z-buffer uh, and so it will blur nothing that's close, uh, but it will, uh, or it will, it will not blur the, the distant, but it will blur the stuff in the foreground. It really depends on where you want to have your um, your focus. 
Um, <clears throat> but there's other things, of course, the wavefront OBJ. All right, so I'm going to save this one, and OBJ files can be fairly large. Uh, we've actually done a nice job here at keeping it somewhat small. What I'll do is I'll save this in my folder where I have saved others before. And uh, what I'll do is just give it a name here. I'll say this is uh, Rocky Mountain 1. Rocky Mountain 1, okay? And when we save this, we'll get that OBJ file that we can use as a mesh. Now, <coughs> the OBJ file does have the basic shape. It does not have the sediments uh, or, or the gullies, the erosion. Uh, you could burn those in, though, um, if, you s if you did that separately, right? If you didn't do it in the 3D designer. But you can also export that. You can store the texture. That's the coloring based on the elevation and slope. You can store... Um, now let's do that. Let's store the texture. Boom, you have it here. And then you take it out as an image, save it as a PNG file. Uh, you have the... Uh, so there's a difference between saving and storing, right? Save will actually save it to file. Store, all of these will be stored as an image that you can later do something with, such as save it if you want it somewhere else in another program. Uh, but for instance, the erosion, same thing. So when you store the erosion, you have it there. You see the lighting. That's something that's, that you use quite a bit in uh, baking the lighting into the terrains. Uh, if you go into game design, you will definitely know what to do with that. Um, store the lighting right we have some light sources that we we can also uh, perhaps want to uh to bake into it um and then the colors uh we don't really have much colors because we we have the texture actually for the elevation map uh from uh, for based on the elevation and the slope that is uh so all of these things you can store there's a z buffer uh that will show you the depth right um how how far it is depend the brightness indicates how far it is and so all of these things you can store and work with. But let's say we didn't want to actually work with another program on this. Let's finish that in Dog Waffle. Um, Howlow 9.1, one thing we could do is simply um, render that at the best possible. Let's do a couple of uh, anti-aliasing level here. We'll basically make multi-pass rendering. So I'm going to say OK that. And uh, in fact, you could animate that if you, if you had um, pre-selected a sequence of frames. But now we have this rendered, and uh, let's see it at 100%. There it is. And so we have a little bit of touch-up we might want to do here on the side, and that's obviously the stuff of Dog Waffle too. You can pick the color you want, such as the one right here, and then simply paint with that. Uh, where is my brush tool here? Uh, let's use the uh, airbrush like this, but uh, make it a, a very light opacity so it's, it's not too intense, and then just brush over that ever so slightly. Uh, you might want to make sure there is no alpha uh, selection mask. Uh, I don't think there is any here, but maybe our opacity is actually too soft. Let's bring it up a little bit higher. There you go. So now you can uh, touch this up a little bit as needed. Uh, that's too much. You know what? Let's go and adjust it like this. There you go. You know, probably if you have a, a, a tablet, you'll be able to do more of the pressure sensitive painting. But you can see here that you can you can do you can use that as well, um, and and do some additional touch up with that. Um, let's see what else. Um, you know, obviously when you have an image like this, uh, it's rarely done. It's uh, it's a good step, but there is more to it. I mean, we can enjoy the gullies we added, the erosion, uh, the clouds. Let's say maybe we want to actually uh, add a little bit something in the foreground, uh, perhaps a little bit of uh, I know, a piece of uh, foliage or uh, shrubbery, uh, and that could be something from the particle system. Let's go enable that and uh, paint, uh, load one of those I know, winter branches. I like the winter branches there. And just paint them in the foreground here. Right? Sometimes you use that just to cover up the edges that you didn't want to paint over. Uh, let's go and undo that. That one was not too good. By the way, before we really work with this, we should save it on a file. We should at least also store it. So let's do that here. So that way we have that available to do a very quick recovery of it. Um, so let's say we, we randomize the, um, the particles here. Let's give it randomize. Let's give it about three. And so that gives it a little bit more of a natural random look to that. Um, let's say we want to actually have a different type. Let's go to the foliage brushes. That's even more sophisticated. Let's load one of the foliage. Now, we don't have the image preview on this yet. 
that may come someday. What we want to do is just uh, experiment with these a little bit. Uh, there's probably some herbs we could try here. Uh, let's try that. Oh, that's interesting. A little bit of actual vegetation growing here. Why not? That will take the attention here. Uh, we could also uh, perhaps change... Uh, let's see some others. There were some really... Oh, tropicals are great. Willow... Weeds. There, there's some couple of interesting weeds here too. Okay, there you go. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put a couple of these weeds move very quickly here and it'll come to the foreground like that. Uh, let's do another one. You've got to just experiment with those a little bit. And keep in mind it also has the self-shadowing or the shading now. So it does uh, global illumination or ambient occlusion based uh, uh, shading and that may also add some really nice depth appearance to it. Ooh, that's an interesting one too. Now that's hiding too much of my tree here, so of my landscapes. I'm going to undo some of that, perhaps keep some here. I um, think that's getting there. Um, let's see one more. I want to try one or two more. There were some others. There's some stems. Not sure what they look like. Ooh, interesting. Um, let's undo that. That's too far. Yeah, we can use some of this in the foreground here. Right, um, <coughs> look interesting, and now we can also add. Um, oh, of course, some sunlight. Let's disable the particle. We are now ready to do one little more thing, and that's to uh, add some lens flares. And and that's because you know uh, photographers hate them. Right? In photography, we like to uh, to hide them or to avoid them. You don't like those reflections and lens flares. Uh, in the real world though, <coughs> um, well not so much in the real world, in the digital world, <laughs> we pride ourselves in showing how, how cool they look, right? Or how much realism it adds to it. A little bit of glow and uh, whatever you want to call that, and a lot of these lenses uh, reflecting. Uh, so there's uh, a bit of uh, experimenting we can do with that. Uh, this one here. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, make sure you don't wipe everything out. We spend a lot of time making this landscape really looking good. So <laughs> we do want to see some of these gullies and some of these erosion creeks and some of these uh, other things there. Let's see if we, maybe we use this. Um, let's do a uh, dynamic range adapting. Yeah, there's, it's already all the way from black to white, you know, from brightest to darkest. Now we may want to just uh, do one final thing and that's to crop it. So we could use, well, first of all, we could use a store copy of that right, as a backup to get back to, because we have this, but we now also have that. Um, and then we can also go to uh, crop. Let's use a crop tool and perhaps uh, get our final cut on that one here. Get our final crop um, and select it to be something like this, right? I mean, uh, the, you know what you want. You know what, what you want to convey in this final image. Let's right click and crop it to that. Now, the dimensions of this image might not be suitable. You may want to check the image info and see if it is the, the right size. Let's say we want it a little bit smaller. Uh, we, we definitely recommend not using the, a height or a width that is an odd number. Let's see, right now here we have even number for width, but the, the buffer height turned out uh, odd. And what you want to do is uh, change that, uh, because if you turn this into an animation, there are very few codecs that know how to render uh, and play back a uh, image sequence or frames or you know a video. Um, that contain odd numbers. They're usually uh, even or even multiples, not just of two, but uh, multiples of four, multiples of eight, 16, <coughs> and some codecs even really just only for one or two specific uh, <coughs> uh, type of uh, uh, resolutions. So let me do this. I'm going to uh, resample it and uh, I'm going to constrain it here, but I'm going to say, okay, instead of five. 37 let's go down a little bit let's say 480 and see what happens to that one okay so the width is 978 maybe we can negotiate that one down to 860 860 422 you know um let's see 360 that's not good let's use uh, 960 471 
now we can say okay let's break the constraint here and just say 476 or or down 472 468 something like that you know just uh, off by one or two pixels you won't notice the difference it, w it will not appear squeezed or something like that and in the end you have um, a, 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 a nice uh, display you can make it crisper still you can still add a uh, photographic or, or, or what is it uh, sharpening here digital photo enhance uh, add a little bit of crispness to this um, and uh, you now have a beautiful landscape that only took us what about 20 minutes to develop and talk about so <coughs> well that's that for the quick review of uh, what's new and how to work and explore the new 3d designer and so many other tools that uh, project dog waffle howler 9.5 will now very soon give you thanks for watching